Hi dear students, in the last class we had seen the observation and the experiments of Galileo. While he was sitting there in the cathedral church, he found that one lantern was moving to and fro and he found that it was moving in wide arcs and this arcs whether it is smaller or bigger it takes same amount of time to travel from one end to another end and he just confirmed these things with the, his pulse rate then he went to his house then he went to his house in order to try one experiment and as an experiment he fixed a string to the branch of a tree and the other end of the string what he did he attached an iron bar then he pushed the string and observed the movements of the string and again he attached a weight bar instead of the iron bar and released the string and there also he observed the arcs and the time it takes to travel from one and one end to another end and what was his finding it takes same amount of time to travel from one end to another end whether it is iron object or wooden object and today we will see the findings of Galileo Galileo thought hard his experiment confirmed that the time taken for one swing remained the same regardless of the weight attached however the time taken for the pendulum to swing did vary according to the length of the string earlier what he found whether it is a smaller arcs or a bigger arcs it takes same amount of time to travel from one end to another and now he found one more thing irrespective of the weight attached the swing it takes same amount of time to travel from one end to another end whether it is iron object the heavy iron object or whether it is a smaller or lighter wooden object or any other lighter object it takes same amount of time to travel from one end to another irrespective of the weight the swing remain the same but one more thing he found However, the time taken for the pendulum to swing and vary according to the length of the string. According to the weight of the object which is attached to the string, there is no change. It takes same amount of time. But according to the string, the length of the string, the movement it varies. The time takes to swing it varies according to what according to the length of the string and then galileo who later went on to study mathematics and become a famous scientist has discovered the law of pendulum so now we saw the law of pendulum what is a pendulum it is an object suspended from a fixed object or fixed place so that it can move very freely back and forward action under the influence of gravity just like the lantern it is attached to the lamp it is attached to the ceiling so that it can move very freely under the influence of gravity so the same way the pendulum it is attached to something else a fixed object and then it moves very freely one side to another side and you might have seen the pendulum clock in say one bar is moving one side to another side so here galileo through this experiment he found the law of pendulum this early experiment made him realize later that the pendulum which was a way to fix to a rod or cord could be used to regulate the movements of a clock once it was put in motion so after finding out the law of pendulum and the experiment galileo found that it can be used it can be used for what in order to keep time in a perfect manner or in order to regulate the movements of a clock once it was put in motion after all it had the astonishingly useful habit of swinging to and fro at the same speed according to its 
length. Astonishingly means surprisingly. Surprisingly, it is a useful habit to move from one end to another end in order to keep the time in a better manner. Then, however, seven decades passed before a Dutch scientist, Christian Hugius, adopted Galileo's idea to build the first pendulum clock with a regulating movement. So, Galileo found the law of pendulum but he did not found the pendulum clock and he just found that it can be used for regulating the time but he could not find a pendulum clock but it was after seven decades. Seven decades means 70 years. One decade means 10 years. So after 70 years, one Dutch scientist named Christian Hughes adopted Galileo's idea. So he just took the idea of Galileo regarding the law of pendulum and with that he built a first pendulum clock with a regulating movement. I hope that you all of you know the pendulum clock and you might have seen the pendulum clock and in the pen and inside the pendulum clock we can notice that there is a pendulum fixed to the clock and that pendulum moves from one side to another end. So I hope that this part is clear to you. Now we will see some of the discoveries of the early clocks. Galileo's remarkable discovery assured in the era of accurate timekeeping. Assured in means beginning in the era of accurate, the perfect timekeeping. So Galileo's discovery of pendulum, the law of pendulum, it helped and it started the era of accurate timekeeping. However, the first mechanical clocks had already appeared a few centuries earlier. Before Galilee also there were many mechanical clocks. But, but these mechanical clocks, they were not accurate. And so before Galileo there were many mechanical clocks. But it is difficult to say that exactly when it start, they started to use the mechanical clocks. For example, water clocks with the moving parts were in use in China 500 years before. 500 years before Galileo, water clocks were used in China and it is difficult to understand from when onwards human beings started to use the mechanical clocks. Now we will see about the mechanical clocks in detail. Around the 13th century AD, the first mechanical clocks appeared in monasteries in Europe and were operated by monks. What is monasteries? Monasteries, it is a religious place where sages live and normally it is connected with the Christian missionaries in Europe and it started the mechanical clocks. It appeared first in 13th century AD and the first mechanical clocks were appeared in monasteries. So, the monks there in monasteries, they started to use the first mechanical clocks. And who operated these clocks? And it was operated by monks there in the monasteries. They were enormous in structures, often weighing several tons and were made by unknown ironsmith. So, these mechanical clocks, they were enormous. Enormous means very large in size. The mechanical clocks which was used in the monasteries, they were in large in size and often weighing several tons. You know, one ton means 1000 kilo. So, several tons and were made by unknown ironsmith. Ironsmith, you know the meaning. This, they are the professionals who makes the iron objects. Nobody knows who made these uh, clocks or the mechanical clocks, but these clocks were very large and very large, often weighing several tons. And these early contraptions did not have hands or a dial. These early contraptions, these early machines, the the early machines that were used in monasteries, they did not have hands or a dial. And what is hands or dial mentioned here? 
and if you take a cloud you can find that there are three hands our hand then minute hand then second hand so now in the mechanical clocks there were no hands it was something very plain and they did not even strike the hour and we know the clocks which we use it is strike the hours but the mechanical clocks which were used in the monasteries they did not strike hour and they did not have hands or dials and what was the purpose and the use of these clocks they used to alert somebody or to toll a bell that called monks to prayer so that was the purpose of that clocks it was not a perfect time keeping mission an accurate time keeping mission and it is just used to alert somebody give a warning to somebody and to call somebody and it was a sign to call and it was a sign to the monks it is the time for prayer and that was the use of first mechanical clocks which were used in monasteries their movements were simple and noisy why because they were driven by weights and wheels since these machines this early contraptions and the early time keeping machines and this mechanical clocks they were driven by weights and wheels these machines were so noisy so that is the first mechanical clocks which were used in the monasteries so i hope that it is clear to you so today we discussed that galileo after his experiment he made the law of pendulum and based on the law of pendulum christian huygens he found the first pendulum clock and before the law of pendulum by galileo some people already started to use mechanical clocks water clocks were used in china and mechanical clocks they appeared in the monasteries in europe in 13th century and what is the speciality of the mechanical clocks used in the monasteries they were large in size and often weighing several tons and these uh, mechanical clocks which were used in the monasteries they were not having hands or dials and they did not strike the hour and the purpose of these mechanical clocks was to alert somebody or call the monks for prayer then finally these early contraptions or the early mechanical clocks they were so noisy because they were driven by weights and wheels hope that it is clear to you in the next class we will see the rest of the chapter thank you have a nice day